Oi, what's going on guys? So, one of the big questions I get these days is about the comparison between the wheel cart and the pack out roller. There's quite a few little differences I've found um, in the past couple of months using the new pack out wheel cart. And I just wanted to share those with you guys to make it easier for you guys to choose between them both. Let's have a look. All right, so what I'm doing at the moment is just getting together a rough sort of setup that a lot of you guys might utilize out in the field, putting a bit of weight in it. So I'm going to have that on the bottom, obviously with the roller. I have the packable um, front on it, which I think is almost a must for a lot of you guys. And for the pack out wheel cart, this will be the box that's on the bottom. So I'll be transferring all this gear into the roller. You can see I've got a hammer drill in there on the bottom with the uh, dust extractor. I've got a reciprocating saw, a couple of drills, a couple of batteries. There's a fair bit of weight in this. This is just sockets and they're all drill bits. So there's a fair bit of weight in that. I'd love to hear what you guys keep in your boxes. Let me know in the comments section. All right, so that's the setup we're gonna be rolling with. Larger box on the bottom, full of the larger tools, a couple of organizers. We've got the pack out lights, another long slim line organizer. And then we've got the crate with the tools in the top. So we'll be transferring half it over to this one later and we'll take it out in the field, eh? Let's go. All right, so we're at the first obstacle. We've got a set of stairs. A lot of guys have wondered how they go when it comes to stairs, especially with the amount of weight that's on the actual wheel cart. A lot of you guys would have seen the other videos and there's a fair bit of flex in them. So we'll see how it goes with this set of stairs, eh? Not too bad. Oh. That's definitely one problem. So I don't know if I caught that on the first bit of footage, but that's been one of the main problems I've had is with the short wheelbase there, how narrow the wheels are has been a problem for myself where I've actually rolled it quite a few times. So with the amount of weight, as you can see, it really wants to topple over. So any uneven ground, not great. So we'll go back up the stairs. Nice and easy. There you go, not too bad. Let's swap them over. All right, so straight off the bat, that felt a lot easier, a lot more solid. I thought the actual handle might've been a little bit sloppy because there is a little bit of play in it, but that was way better than the rolling cart. So than the wheel cart. So let's go back up and see what it does going up. So already it's a lot easier. I'm not sure why feels almost lighter. Yeah. So next up, I'm gonna give it a go. And legit, I'm just gonna take it over this little hump. I don't know if you can sort of see it. It's not too much of a hump, but these are certain things I've hit out in the field and I've had troubles with the wheel cart, with the wheel with the wheel cart compared to the pack out roller. So we'll give that a shot. So we're just gonna come through here. There's quite a few little divots in here. It's a bit of a slope, a couple of edges there and a pipe. So we'll go forward. 
I'm, I'm gonna go straight through the guts. No problems. This sort of stuff you're always gonna hit. As you can see, even coming down on the angle, one-handed. Backwards. Nice and easy. So hitting that is just a bit of a divot there. I hit the exact same spot. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's definitely, you can see the wheels get up when we get a bit of speed, but it's not too bad. We go down, you can see the wheels, that, that's pretty much what starts to happen. It's fairly easy, I'll go nice and slow. You can see it wants to get up. Just way too easy to roll this. Maybe I'm going a bit too quick. Let's go slow. <laughs> massive, massive difference. All right, so have a look at this. If we look over the top, you can see how much of a difference there is. Let's uh, get these a bit closer. Massive difference with the wheels. You can see very narrow and a lot wider. And I do believe the other reason why there's a big difference is where the wheels are located. So this is roughly in line with the bar and in line with the box almost. You can see this one is way further back so you've got more of the weight on the front compared to the roller. So that's got to be one of the other factors. So for me this is a massive reason why I'm making some of the conclusions I am making. I'll probably share them a little bit more at the end. Let me know what you think, guys. Am I onto the problem here? Is that why? The actual location and the width of the wheels. Is it the height as well? The other wheels are a little bit bigger, whether that makes a problem at all. Don't know. Let me know, guys. A lot of walking around with this, your forearms do get a workout just because of the positioning of the wheels again. So while we're here, may as well go through the sand. And that's pretty much it. Definitely got to pull it. So obviously you're not going to go through much sand, but I figured I may as well give it a look. Go to the pack out roller. It's probably about the same in the sand. Not great. You're almost dragging it. But really that's to be expected. Tell you what though, the difference, keep saying it. You do feel the difference. So here's just a quick size comparison. That's the wheel cart in a Pajero Sport. It's a wagon, obviously. Not everyone's gonna have a wagon, but you can just see that it is a little bit larger and because it doesn't fold down, it's not the most efficient setup for that sort of thing. Maybe if you've got a ute, might be a little bit better, but it still takes up quite a lot of room. I'll throw in the pack out roller. There you have it, pack out roller in. And you can see it's a lot more efficient I can still pack stuff on top of this and I've got all the side access there. So just gotta keep that in mind, guys. Different setups. Let's have a look at a few different ways of utilizing both the roller and the wheel cart and we'll see what's best for you. 
So this is probably the most utilized sort of setup out in the field that I see. Everyone just wants to get their tools in and out of the site in the most efficient way. And the roller is the way to do that. As you can see, it's really easy to move around and it doesn't take up as much room as the wheel cart when you throw it in the back of the car into the ute, wherever you're throwing it. And once again, if you did want to utilize a crate or something on the front, you can get the packable mount and just throw your crate on there. It's just as easy. Throw a drummer cable on, and probably even throw Throw your bag on the front, and off you go. When it comes to the roller, there's not too many ways you can really change up your setup. Obviously, you can use different pack out boxes, you can use the little organizers, all that sort of stuff, but it just packs on top of each other like that not the best to work out of. Obviously all this will change once we get the drawers here in Australia. So I'll be doing another video on that when that comes. So then if we look at the wheel cart, this is pretty much the exact setup that I have for work at the moment. I'm in construction, doing quite a lot of different bits and pieces. So I'm going from level to level to level and I need quite a lot of gear. So this is the sort of setup I've got and it's not too bad. You can definitely feel the difference with the way the wheels are set up compared to the roller. It is a little bit harder, in my opinion, to actually sort of hold it in place like that. I don't know what it is, but the roller is a lot easier to manoeuvre. And when going on long trips with it, so I've walked from the car, which is about a kilometre, it actually hurts, starts to hurt your forearms quite a bit. You definitely feel it. I wouldn't say hurt, I guess, it's just you feel it in your forearms a lot, whereas compared to the roller, you don't. So I usually don't have these extra pieces in the side here. This is just to show you what you can throw in. I don't really use a level, and this is just a 1200 um, meter, 1200 mil long ruler. But you can see you can throw anything in there. I have put poles in there for the um, cable rollers, which has been really, really good. You can utilize these containers from the other boxes. So you can put two small ones in there, which is fantastic. Fill them up with screws or whatever. These do not fit in these side ones here, which is unfortunate. I'd love Milwaukee to change that. But the other thing you can do, if you don't have uh, battery mounts, is have a setup like that, or even just fill that up with screws. That's just the larger container. So this back part is definitely an upgrade for a lot of you guys that are working out of these compared to the roller, that's where it's gonna really differ. So then if we look at the front, obviously I've been utilizing the crate. It is good. I usually have my tote in there. I can take that out on site. And then you can throw whatever else in there. Same thing again, you can just throw your cable, something like that it up with all other gear. I've been using it for all sorts of stuff, throwing um, a lot of old circuit breakers that we wanted out of boards, throwing them all in there, or even rubbish. It has been really good for rubbish. You can throw, throw your veto bag in there. So for your veto lovers, throw your bag in the top. That way it's not coming out. And then because you've got the crate above it, you've got all this room down here. I've been utilizing the 48 tools pack out attachment. They're battery mounts. Fantastic, if you haven't looked at them, um, have a look at those. I'll leave a link in the um, bio. You can just get all your batteries. They're the 18 volts. And then you can get the M12 uh, mounts as well. So that just uh, slides in, slides out. So you can always remove that if you really want. You can throw that up there. Have all your batteries there, have all your tools down below. That's if, that's if you don't want to utilize the crate, just like that. 
Once again, it's all secure. Your tote's not going in there. Your batteries are accessible. One of the other ideas for these battery mounts is that you clip it into your pack out. And then you can, uh, you can hang that on the wall. You can carry it around. Whatever you guys want, want to do. One of the other things I do with the front packable is I throw my batteries on there like that. Some people like it, others don't. It means they're a lot more easily accessible. So one of the other things I did do was utilize the crate on the bottom of the wheel cart and utilize that for carrying around quite a few things on site. Worked really well. One of the other things to keep in mind as well is when you have the larger box on the bottom, it does foul on the back of the wheel cart and it doesn't stay up. Whereas if we look at the roller box, it actually has the clips on the back here that actually click in. So it holds open, you can get into your tools and it closes just as easy. So then as I said earlier, with the roller box, when you're just stacking tools like this, I do feel that it's the way to go over the wheel cart. As you can see, there's a fair bit of flex. I have done the other video where I've put 180 kilos on this and I did get it up, but you do want to strap it down. So I'm going to be looking at uh, throwing a couple of straps probably through these sides here, just so it holds it on. I would like Milwaukee to make some sort of clipping mechanism maybe. I'm not sure how they would do it, but I do think it needs to be done so it keeps it solid. If they did that, I do believe this wheel cart would be a lot better and a lot more guys might get it. Because as you can see, it gets it up fine. There's not too much weight in these. I don't think there's anything in this box, this box, and this is half full. This has a couple of tools in it. So it's not that full capacity and you're doing that over and over, I do feel you're gonna have problems. What do you reckon? Let me know in the comments if you think this will last without being clipped down as, as so. I'd love to hear your thoughts. So lastly, with the wheel cart on site, I've been utilizing the Milwaukee Packout workbench, which has been really good. I would like it a little bit larger. I have made up another piece of timber which sits, uh, I think it's about 900 long, and it's about another 150 wide. So it's just a little bit too small. If they made a big one or something that, that uh, came out, it'd be really good. But that way you can utilize that. You can have your tools underneath. And you can throw whatever in there that you need. Fantastic. And if you really want to, you can always grab your light. This is the pack out light. I don't know if you guys have seen that. Throw it on top. How are we gonna do that? There you go. Goes on there like that. That way you can move around on site, have your light ready. Don't have a battery in it, there you go. Throw a battery in. And away you go. Another thing I did find was this part here actually came in handy for getting it up onto certain areas, you can drag it on the plastic and it's easy for the wheels to get up. So let's go through some of the final thoughts on these setups. If I'm working out of the wheel cart or the roller, it's definitely gonna be the wheel cart. Overall, you have more functionality. You can use it as a normal trolley to get gear around on site. I've used it for switchboards. I've used it for just general rubbish used it for cable drums, basically anything you can think of. If you're a plumber, a lot of guys will probably be utilizing the trolley function for old hot water systems or even new hot water systems, getting them in and off site. I think there's a lot of things they can fix in it. Certain things would be the positioning of the wheels. I think they're too narrow, which makes it roll. So I think Milwaukee should be looking at that. So I did talk about the longer walks with both of these before and how I felt it in my forearms. 
when I was traveling about a kilometer away from the work site with it. And compared to the wheeler, the roller, sorry, it's day and night almost. There's no problems with this one. I've heard the opposite from other people, but for myself, that was a big thing. And I do believe it is because of the positioning of the wheels, as I showed you earlier. They definitely need to utilize some sort of locking mechanism on the wheel cart so that if you have a lot of pack out stacked up that you can lock it to the back and you're not putting strain on the pivoting point on the bottom there. They definitely need a different system for unlocking the bottom of the wheel cart. There's been quite a few other people out there that have made their own. Seems pretty simple and I think Milwaukee should take that upon themselves. The other thing I believe Milwaukee could do with the wheel cart is make it adjustable, whether you can go up or down or even take the bar out so that it can fit into smaller areas. I can't even fit it into my side box. And I would say the same thing about the roller itself. It needs a removable handle. You can get it out fairly easy, just gotta take the screws out. But I think a split pin or something like that would be a better option. So I would absolutely love to hear from you guys about both of these systems, all the problems that you foresee, Anything that you've had problems with, maybe, maybe you are rolling with the roller or the pack out wheel cart at the moment and you've had quite a few problems or things that you want to change, uh, hit me up in the comments. It's not just for me, but it's for everyone else. The more information that we have out there, the better. And if this has helped you at all, don't forget to hit the like, the subscribe and the notification bell. It all helps me out. Until next time guys, stay addicted to tools.